Hello everyone. Welcome to Honest Information for Powerful Lives. I just did my first pre-class on discipline. We're going to be talking about this book that I'm revising and it will be available soon. Discipline Exposed, Surviving Fried Worms and Flying Mud Balls. Um, this world needs discipline right now. It's... I can't tell you how many people I talk to that say their homes are in chaos and that they are worried about whether or not they can actually straighten things out. So I'm going to give you a lot of tips and information that will help with that. But first, I want to um, encourage moms. I've just joined Moms for America. Oh, please go and check them out online. It's momsforamerica.us, and I'll include a link to that. It's a great organization. These moms are committed to turning America around, and we need some help with that, don't we? Because we're going down the wrong trail right now. And a lot of it is based on kids and what they're doing and I have heard some moms say, well, I just don't know that I have the power to do anything. My kids are out of control. I can see right now they're 9 and 10, and I can see that at 16, it is just going to be horrible. And how am I ever going to make this work? So I want to encourage you with a little story today. I had three kids, one in diapers, and uh, we were low on money, and I had to buy diapers, the disposable kind. I couldn't use the cloth kind. So there was a lot of worries about finances. Um, my kids always had really horrible diaper rashes, and the cloth kind just wouldn't work. So we were low on money. I was trying to feed three kids, trying to do some things at the church. I was frazzled and overworked. I was tired, and uh, the twins were, I think, with mom and dad, and I just had uh, Kenny, and I was trying to fold some clothes, and I was tired and weary, so I turned the TV on, and it was a, a talk show, and on the talk show, they had somebody that I liked, so I listened to that. And I'm almost done with the clothes. And Gloria Steinem comes on. And she said in her talk that uh, mothers and women of America needed to stop having children. And they needed to, if they did have children, go to work. Because if you're staying at home and trying to take care of children, you are one step away from welfare and your kids aren't going to turn out right, and there's not really a lot of hope for them anyway, and you are, in her words, the low man on the totem pole. I started bawling. I had a degree in psychology. I loved my kids. I was doing my best to raise them properly. My husband was working hard, but my work, she talked about uh, cleaning your toilets and, and doing dishes was work for the lowest of the low. Really? And if you're spending your time, no matter what degree you had, you're spending your time in the home, you are wasting your life. I mean, I was just bawling. She was just tearing apart a stay-at-home mom. So I sat there and cried. I turned the TV off and I'm sitting there crying and Ron comes in from whatever he was doing. I forget. I said, can you watch Kenny? I got to go see daddy right now, right now. And he said, sure. And I grabbed my purse and I took off for my dad's house. He was a minister at the time and one of the most intelligent men I've ever known. And uh, I walked in and I'm to his office and I'm just bawling like crazy. Daddy, daddy, oh, what am I going to do? I'm wasting my life and, and I've got these three kids and I want to be good to them. But it's just the same thing all the time. Clean the toilets and, and take care of the diapers and wash the clothes and cook the meals. And, oh, you know, just crying my little heart out. And he said to me, 
He says, what got you in this mess? So I told him about the program. And like my dad, would, uh, he was so calm when he would talk to you. He just leaned back in his chair. And, well, I think I can help you with that. You can? He said, yes. And he knew a very wealthy man in downtown Atlanta. And he said, he was talking to me the other day. And Stanley told me that he had given um, a large sum of money to a group that is trying to take a computer uh, and teach it to feel because they were thinking if they could teach this computer how to feel compassion and how to feel love and how to respond to humans that were hurting, that it would open up a whole new world of, of how they could help. And with that information, it would go into some areas, but it could also be medical help for people that were dealing with cancer or whatever. And maybe the computer would be able to see how the emotional works with the medical. And then they could discover maybe more of the cures for cancer that would work not only physically, but, but mentally. But they, they have decided they need a mom to help them with that. And they can't pay you because they're, you know, all the money is going into the research. But if you needed a new washer or something like that, maybe they could uh, give you a few hundred dollars here and there to help you with that. Would you be interested in the job as vice president of compassion development? Now, you can imagine I'm sitting there, tears rolling down my face, and I'm hearing all this, and I bit, hook, line, and sinker. I said, oh, daddy, that would be great. I would be vice president. Oh, and my, I could use my degree and I could, I could do all these things. To, I know just how I did. Daddy, that would be great. Could you set that up for me? And he just looked at me for a second and then he took his fist and he banged it on the table. And he said, what do you think you're doing now? What? What? He said, Debbie, you are raising adults that will change the world. You have the power to possibly raise a president of the United States or someone who's going to go out and discover the cure for cancer or someone who is going to invent some amazing thing that will absolutely change everyone's life. You have the power to change the future. No one on this planet has the power that moms have. No one on this planet can change the future in the same way that a dedicated mom would. And he went on to talk about if you go in the past and in the future, what do very famous people talk about? Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am and all that I have become is because of my dear mother. And how many other great men who have done fabulous things for this country, how many of them are saying it's because of our mom? The current thing is Ben Carson. He says everything that he became is because of his mom and her training and her teaching and her support and her encouragement. So moms... I don't care if there's chaos in your house right now. I don't care what is going on with you. You have the power to change now and to change the future by what you do with your children. Never, never forget that. No president on earth has the power that you have. No CEO has the power that you have. No one on this planet. Now, dads are very important too, and they have power with their kids too, but it's different. 
It is different. It's like Bill Cosby said. He said he played with his sons, you know, to get them to know football, through the football, and come here and tackle me and do this. But when that kid went running out on the football field and the camera's on him, what's he do? Hi, Mom! <laughs> yeah. We have great power. And it is time that we used it. It is time that the women before us that did not use it on their kids, and now we have a problem, I give you a challenge. Stop it. Stop it and learn how to be a good mom. Learn how to change the lives of your kids. You can do it with compassion, with love. You can do it your own way with supporting the things that are important to you, whether it's sports or, or politics or education or music or whatever. But no matter what it is, it has to include discipline. And you have to understand how you can mold and shape that little mind to be everything that God wants him to be. You can do that. I promise, I promise, I would not lie. So this is Debbie Jansen with Honest Information for Powerful Lives. Moms, Mother's Day is coming up. It is your day. But Every day is your day to change the world. Let's go out there and do that, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.